Please repeat. Varam. Varam. Benediction. Benediction. Varaya. Just ask from. Just ask from. Adram. Adram. Auspicious. Auspicious. Te. Te. Unto you. Unto you. Varam Isham. Varam Isham. The giver of all benediction. The giver of all benediction. Ma. Ma. Mum. Mum. From me. Abhi Van Chitam. Abhi Van Chitam. Wishing. Wishing. Brahman. Brahman. O oh, Brahma. <coughs> Shreya. Shreya. The ultimate success. The ultimate success. Parishrama. Parishrama. For all penances. For all penances. Humsham. Humsham. For everyone. For everyone. Mat. Mat. My. Darshana. Darshana. Realization. Avahi. Up to the limit of. Please repeat. Translation. I wish you good luck, O Brahma. You may ask for me. The giver of all benediction. All that you may desire. You may know that the ultimate benediction, as the result of all penances, is to see me by realization. I'll read that again. I wish you good luck, O Brahma. You may ask for me, the giver of all benediction, all that you may desire. You may know that the ultimate benediction, as a result of all penances, is to see me by realization. Purport by the divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. The ultimate realization of the Supreme Truth is knowing and seeing face to face the personality of Godhead. Realization of the impersonal Brahman and localized Paramatma features of the personality of Godhead is not ultimate realization. When one realizes the Supreme Lord, one does not struggle hard to perform such penances. The next stage of life is to discharge devotional service to the Lord just to satisfy Him. In other words, one who has realized and seen the Supreme Lord has attained all perfection because everything is included in the, that highest perfectional stage. The impersonalists and the pseudomistics, however, cannot reach this state. Translation. I wish you good luck. O Brahma, you may ask from me, the giver of all benediction, all that you may desire. You may know that the ultimate benediction, as a result of all penances, is to see me by realization. Prabhupada says that the jnanis and the uh, yogis cannot, you know, see Krishna because they they don't have devotional service. I was, there was in the lecture I just heard the other day. He said that, and then also in a in a recording, uh, you know, he asked Prabhupada asked, you know, why don't they know? Krishna, why don't they have Krishna? And it, so they, the devotees answered all kinds of uh, answers. But then one of the devotees said, because they don't have Bhakti Vedanta. Mm -hmm. And he said, here's the answer. <laughs> and they said it was beautiful in two, in two respects. Uh, because they didn't have Srila Prabhupada, meaning the proper spiritual master. And they also didn't have Bhakti. Okay. Pretty interesting. That's a very short purport. So, uh, did anybody ha uh, have a question or comment before you? I want to go on to the next one as well. Next what? You want to do? Yeah. Oh. Is that okay? You have to tell me so I can write it there. Otherwise, they don't know. Anything. They won't know. That you get to. Yeah, it's just a short, very short purport. You don't want to just stay in the back? Well, I can. Where are we at right 
now is that my brother was still. Uh, yeah, the Lord had just shaken hands with Brahma, you know. Like that, like that. Gokula and Ragnar Prabhu said they did like this. They both went like that, you know. Not like that. <laughs> yeah. So they both went like this. Like this yeah. <laughs> and that, the other one touched with their hand. Like and they touched, yeah. Well, the pr two previous verses, uh, and seeing the law present before him, the Lord accepted him as worthy to create living beings, to be controlled as he desired, and thus being much satisfied with him. The Lord shook hands with Brahma, and slightly smiling, addressed him thus. In the next verse, the beautiful personality of Godhead addressed Lord Brahma, O Brahma, impregnated with the Vedas. I am very much pleased with your long accumulated penance, with the desire for creation. Hardly am I pleased with the pseudo-mystics. So there was, uh, there were two paragraphs in that previous verse, 19, where uh, the prophet says, Brahma also does his duty very perfectly not only by generating the living entities, but also by spreading his party for reclaiming the fallen souls. The party is called the Brahma Sampradaya, and any member of this party today is naturally engaged in reclaiming the fallen souls back to Godhead, back home. The Lord is very much anxious to get back his parts and parcels, as stated by the Gita. No one is more dear than the one who takes the task of reclaiming the fallen souls back to Godhead. So it's really beautiful to hear that, that Brahma has his party. It's just like right down with our Sankatam party. <laughs> I'm sure Prabhupada's got his gun. That's his party, you know. And uh, it's just so beautiful to hear like that. So. It's a great responsibility that Brahma, Lord Brahma took very seriously and also uh, it's a great responsibility that we have to carry on even though we don't feel qualified at all. We simply have to just keep repeating the words of the, of, uh, of the Lord, the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, of our spiritual master, as a prophet said, as a peon, which definition of peon means messenger. Simply as a messenger to simply repeat and not change. Now the next verse, I mean the next paragraph, is also very heavy. The uh, prophet says, There are many renegades from the Brahma Sampradaya whose only business is to make them forgetful of the Lord and thus entangle them more and more in material existence. Such persons are never dear to the Lord and the Lord sends them deeper into the darkest region of matter so that such envious demons may not be able to know the Supreme Lord. Anyone, however, preaching the mission of the Lord in the line of the Brahma Sampradaya is always dear to the Lord, and the Lord, being satisfied with such a preacher of the authorized bhakti cult, shakes hands with him in great satisfaction. That's very beautiful. So again, back for today's text, text number 21. I wanted to read, I'll just read the translation of text 22. Just to, the highest perfectional ingenuity is the personal perception of my abode. So, and this has been possible because of your submissive attitude in the performance of severe penance according to my order. That's the part I wanted to touch on is the submissive, the submissive part. How important it is. In Bhagavad Gita, uh, Arjuna, uh, text 7, chapter 2, he says, Now I'm confused about my duty and lost all composure because of weakness. In this condition, I'm asking you to tell me clearly what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and the soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. So that's, if the submissiveness is not there, then you know, it just doesn't work. In all fields of knowledge, 
It just doesn't work. Uh, martial arts, the sensei sees that the, that the student is arrogant. You know, he, he already thinks he's a good fighter. Not really listening, you know, carefully. Not really practicing like he should be. Uh, you know, arrogant. Well, you know, he's not going to get the, the real nectar. Uh, there was one time in Los Angeles, we, we were at the temple, but we would have martial arts instructors occasionally come and, you know, we were at a range of class. And uh, there was this one that we actually had to go to him. And uh, we kind of got tired after a few months. He wasn't showing us any, any moves. He was just getting us to build our strength up, you know. So, I know it sounds like I was a little puffed up, but I was really afraid to ask him, actually. The other French devotee said uh, he wasn't going to ask him. But we both wanted to ask him when we were going to start the moves. And so one day he took my hand, trimmed my wrist, wrapped his arm up around, and got my neck, and then did like that. And he said, you mean like this? And I said, yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit more, and he snapped the neck, you know. So, uh, so he was trying to make me submissive, I guess, you know, instead of being arrogant. But uh, so, Prabhupada says in purport, by nature's own way, the complete system of material activities is a source of perplexity for everyone. In every step, there is perplexity, and therefore, it behooves one to approach a bona fide spiritual master who can give one proper guidance for executing the purpose of life. All Vedic literature advises us to approach a bona fide spiritual master to get free from the perplexities of life, which happen without our desire. They are like a forest fire that somehow blazes without being set by anyone. Similarly, the world situations is such that perplexities of life automatically appear without our wanting such confusion. No one wants fire, and yet it takes place and we become perplexed. The Vedic wisdom therefore advises that in order to solve the complexities of life and to understand the science of the solution, one must approach a spiritual master, who is the in the civic succession. A person with a bona fide spiritual master is supposed to know everything. One should not therefore remain in material complexities, but should approach a spiritual master. That is the purport of this verse. Says, Ham Sarvasha Prabhupo Mata Sarvam Pavartate Iti Matva Bajanti Mam Buddha Baba Saman Bitaha. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Thoughts of my pure devotee, Matita Matata Prana, Bodha Yanta Parasparam, Kata Yanta Cha Mam Nityam, Tush Yanti Cha Ramati Cha. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, their lives are surrendered to me, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss, enlightening one another and conversing about me. The sentence of the pure devotees are described in this verse specifically. Devotees of the Supreme Lord are 24 hours daily engaged in glorifying the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Their hearts and souls are constantly submerged in Krishna, and they take pleasure in discussing him with other devotees. Tashin Satta Yutanam Bajtan Priti Purvakam Dhani Budi Yogam Tam Inamam Upayanti Te To those who are constantly devoted to worship and love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. 
in this verse, the word booty yoga is very significant. We may remember that in the second chapter, the Lord instructed Arjuna and said that he had spoken to him of many things and that he would instruct him in the way of booty yoga. Now, booty yoga is explained. Booty yoga in itself is action in Krishna consciousness. That is the highest intelligence. Buddhi means intelligence, and yoga means mystic activities and mystic elevation. When one tries to go back home, back to Godhead, and takes fully to Krishna consciousness and devotional service, his action is called Buddhi Yoga. Text number 11. These are the nutshell verses. It's uh, chapter 10. It's text 8, 9, 10, and 11. Uh, Probably call them the nutshell verses. The what nutshell. Book is that? Like, you know, to understand Bhagavad Gita, like a very important part. You call them in the nutshell. You know. Yeah, but what is that? The, the, what book is that? Bhagavad Gita. Uh, uh, ten, chapter, text 8, 9, 10, and 11. I love that one, number 9, especially. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, their lives are surrendered to me, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss in lightening one another and conversing about me. Uh, text 10. And text 11. Out of compassion for them, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Purpur Prophet says, when Lord Chaitanya was in Bainara's promulgate, promulgate, the chanting of the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, thousands of people were following him. Prakasananda, Prakasananda, a very influential and learned scholar in Bainara's at that time, derided Lord Chaitanya for being sentimentalist. Sometimes philosophers criticize the devotees because they think that most of the devotees are in the darkness of ignorance and are philosophically naive sentiments. Actually, that is not the fact. There are very, very learned scholars who have put forward the philosophy of devotion. But even if a devotee does not take advantage of their literatures or of his spiritual master, if he is sincere, in his devotional service, he is helped by Krishna himself within his heart. So the sincere devotee engaged in Krishna consciousness cannot be without knowledge. The only complication is that one carry out devotional service in full Krishna consciousness. And we were touching on uh, humility. Uh, chapter 13. 6, 8 through 12, translation. Humility, pridelessness, nonviolence, tolerance, simplicity, approaching a bona fide spiritual master, cleanliness, steadiness, and self control, renunciation of objects of sense gratification, absence of false ego, the perception of the evil of birth, death, old age, and disease, non attachment to children, wife, home, and the rest, and even mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events, constant and unalloyed devotion to me, resorting to solitary places, detachment from the general mass of people, accepting the importance of self-realization and philosophical search for the absolute truth. All these I thus declare to be knowledge, and what is contrary to these is ignorance. So further down in the purport, second paragraph, Prabhupada says, as for the knowledge outlined here, the items may be analyzed as follows. Humility means that one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others. The material conception of life makes us very eager to receive honor from others. But from the point of view of a man of perfect knowledge, he knows that he is not his body. Anything honor or dishonor pertaining to this body is useless. 
We should not be hankering after this material deception. People are very anxious to be famous for their religion, and consequently, sometimes it is found that without understanding the principle, principles of religion, one enters into some group which is not actually following religious principles, and then wants to advertise himself as a religious mentor. As for actual advancement in spiritual science, one should have a test to see how far he is progressing. He can judge by the, these items. Prabhupada says that uh, when it comes to religion, what is the first thing in religion? Well, in religion, really, it's number one is love. And then when you have love, you know, the next thing you have to ask is, what is the object of that love? You know, and of course that would be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so the nice thing is that Bhakti Yoga, you know, uh, devotional service, and this, this Sampradaya, the Vedas, you know, authorized Bhagavad Gita, you know, Bhagavatam, authorized translations, uh, it's not, you know, like you don't want to be listening to anyone who's completely away from pure devotional service. Certainly, you don't want to listen to my bodies. You don't want to lose your uh, spiritual life. You don't want to lose your faith. The prophet says that uh, you listen to my bodies like that, then you simply, you know, you lose everything, you know. And uh, it's so easy just to be humble, just to be humble. I mean, it's hard not to, to not be humble. It's hard to be, have a hard heart to Krishna, you know. And Prabhupada says, the soul is like uh, water. And that water wants to be water. But due to some artificial uh, condition, you know, cold temperature, then the water becomes hard. So due to an artificial condition in the material world, our hearts may become hard toward Krishna. But that's temporary because the soul wants to return to its loving, natural condition of loving Krishna, serving Krishna. Uh, in the end, we should all eventually, you know, some, may, some souls that may take a very long time, unfortunately. But, uh, Anybody have any comments so far? Yes, I have one. Um, you just now said um, about love, and there is one game shot on right now. I've seen one time. And they have asked about, um, they have five um, answers to this one question. What is What should be uh, a person, a human being, should have? Like, what is the most good quality of human being should have. Everyone guessed it wrong. Everybody said truthfulness, honesty, but no one said love and be human, like what you just said to each other. No one guessed it, you know? Well, you know, that's interesting because when Guru Das was here, uh, he was giving a class. He yeah. was sitting out here mm -hmm. in the floor and giving a class. And, you know, um, he's all about, you know, love and the devotees and things like that. And he was talking, you know, and, and people, I don't know if he asked a question or what it was, but people were giving them different ideas. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, not to be arrogant, which I, I guess I'm always arrogant, really, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I mentioned that I've always thought that it should be like the Chaitanya China, you know, uh, loving exchanges between devotees. And he said, aha, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, like <laughs> that, you know. And I was so happy. Because, you know, I really didn't know, because that was the first day I'd ever met him. No, once before he was at Theatre here in New Orleans, but I didn't get any personal connection with him there. But uh, I, I thought, wow, that's, <laughs> I was really happy. I mean, you know. Uh, you don't think about it very much, you know, but yeah. you, you just don't pay attention. Yeah. And you may think uh, loving exchanges between devotees is that practical. Mm -hmm. Don't let the analytical mind get involved. Mm -hmm. Don't let the mind get involved. That's just the modes of material nature, you know. But, uh, you know, it's there in the books. 
love and exchange is between the bodies. And we're always thinking, you know, oh, we are the one, you know. We are, this is another devotee just came to me like a few days ago. We were just working out, we were like talking about the pandemic, you know. Oh, said, yeah. And then he said, you and me don't have to worry about it. I said, why? Because we both have blood O. He said that blood O will, might not get it, you know, their blood test. That's what he thought, and I was like, he was, he said, everybody will be gone, and then I said, what? Then you and me, around here, I'm going to be fun, but his mind is thinking, we're not going to give it. It's all these other people out there. <laughs> but you know... You don't think, you know, can't think like that. Yeah. I mean, the next minute's not promised, tomorrow's not promised. Uh, wow, my, this body is, six, is getting close to 65. Mm. Wow. And all of a sudden, this one year's time, it's like so many more problems. I'm losing so much uh, stamina. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the, the knees are getting worse. It's just, yeah. uh, it's really happening. This body's really aging. But that's glorious and fun because, you know, it's like, wow, Krishna really is glorious. And, and Prabhupada is glorious because everything they say is coming true, you know. Uh, I'll have to leave this body too, like I've done millions of times before. Say a prayer. Uh, Amal's mother passed away last night. Oh, no. He's hurting, you know. Uh, and I guess she must be in India, maybe? Yes, they have a video and everything. He sent me today this morning at 4. Where is he at now? He's in his room, crying yeah. really, really bad. He's very attached. He's very, every day we talk about it. Every day I have to console him. Every day, you know. Even yesterday, you know. Every day. Because he's like the last son of his mother. But he, they have all on video, you know, they, at least you could see. They're praying, it's in a little village, they're chanting, you know, and they're going to probably have the whole ceremony on tape, you know, on video, wow. something like that. There's one thing I do like to tell uh, those people that uh, try to console before. Mm, that it's hard, you know. You, you, you're very fortunate. I said, you are mm -hmm. so fortunate. I know you love your mother. Uh, I love my mother too, but... Yeah. I only got, to, I must have been four and a half or so when she, mm -hmm. she left her body, you know. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get hardly any association with my mm -hmm. mother. So, so I'd like to tell him, you were yeah. so fortunate. Mm -hmm. I guess he probably feels bad. And these kids. guys' situation all is so hard, you know. They leave, they, they say to their mom, I'm coming back, but they never go back. It just happened to another time last year. You know, same thing. Yeah. He's very attached and he, when they leave, they say they're coming back, but they never go back. Same thing with the come on, you know? And and they cannot, the last time they see, that is the last time. Yeah. They don't know, you know? Yeah. And it's really, really very bad feeling, you know? It's hard for them. I mean, they're very attached yeah. to their moms. And it happened to be my mom's anniversary yesterday. So you all sit there crying about that too. You see, if you see him, you know, just talk to him. Yeah, Anyone yeah. will see him. Yeah, I will. Um, so the last one, it's, it's almost time. Yeah, I've got to go too because i got to go see him. I really don't want to, but I know he's going to cry. Uh, one who is thus transcendently situated at once realizes the Supreme Brahman. He never laments nor desires to have anything. Mm -hmm. He is equally disposed to every living entity. In that state, he attains pure devotional service unto me. One can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of the Supreme Lord by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. Though engaged in all kinds of activities, my devotee under my protection reaches the eternal and imperishable abode by my grace. And all activities just depend upon me and always work under my protection. And such devotion service be fully conscious of me. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditional life on my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. No one else any questions or comments? Thank you for your nice class, too. Thank you, Boo. Thank you uh, for all of your everything, all your blessings, and for being for being here. <laughs>
Glorious to some of the devotees, like Glorious to the Parampara, Glorious to Shri Shri Gornitai, Shri Shri Radha Radha Kanta, Glorious to the Yiddish Mirabhagavatam, Glorious to the Talavan, Kalvatai,